Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In recent episodes, we have been working through the development of a vignette, if you want to think of it that way, uh, basically a document that will show people how they can interact with our Philotyper R package to go ahead and classify their 16S RNA gene sequences. So I want to take on another uh, function in that vignette, and there's a lot to learn in doing this. Uh, namely, the, most of the files we're going to be reading in are quite large. And so, again, we're doing things in test-driven development. And so the question is, how do we do test-driven development when we expect to have large files? And how do we do it when we're reading in files? Because if I don't have data necessarily in the package, which you can do, but I don't have at this point, um, how do we do a test? We're reading in data. Um, when we don't have files. It seems a little bit confusing, right? Uh, maybe it's just the way I've explained it, but trust me, it's a little bit confusing to me too. So that's what we're going to do in today's episode. We're going to write a function that we'll call read underscore fast a to read in a fast a formatted file. Now, if this is all gobbledygook to you, please, please, please don't run away. Don't close the browser. Stick around because I think you'll definitely learn a lot about working with R, our programming and package development in today's episode. Over here in our studio, I have my Philotyper um, package opened up with all the code. If you wanna get the repository as it currently stands, go down below in the show notes and you'll see a link to GitHub for what the repository looks like right now, <laughs> as well as what it looks like at the end of the episode. Again, as you've been following along, here we are in the home directory for our project, the project root directory, as I call it. And there's a directory in here called benchmarking where I have my vignette.r script. This is probably not where it's going to finally wind up living when everything is said and done, but eh, it seemed like as good a place as any to be putting it. So again, this vignette.r script is kind of what I'm thinking of as a demo or tutorial on how to interact with Philotyper. And so we start by loading the, the tidyverse as well as two files, one that has the taxonomy data, one that has the sequence data, we're going to assume, <laughs> and we will check, that both of these files have the same sequences represented. And then what I did here on line six through eight was read in that taxonomy data. And then what we do on lines 10 through 12 is read in the fast day data. And then between lines 10 and, let's see, 17, we are reading in the sequence data um, and getting it into a good format. And then we have, um, we're joining together the taxonomy data and the FASTA data to make sure that those data are in the same order before we finally send it off to build Kamer database. Um, in here, I've got some legacy code, if you will, for some benchmarking. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, prof, viz, and micro benchmark. Uh, if you wanna see uh, all the great benchmarking we did to try to optimize build Kamer database, I encourage you to go check the last couple of episodes. All right, so that's got that cleaned up. and so. Although I've got these in different order, maybe I'll go ahead and reorder them for the order I'm going to do them in. Um, we're going to put the genera after reading in the sequences, right? And so again, what we're going to start with is working with the fast day data. And so I'm going to come down to my console and I'll do use underscore r read underscore fast day. Now, some of you might be thinking, isn't there already a read fast day function out there? Yes, there is. <laughs> there is something in BioStrings. Uh, from Bioconductor that will allow you to read in FASTA formatted DNA and amino acid and all sorts of different types of sequence data. Um, there's also a read.fasta package out there from, I think it's in Seekin or something like that. I'm going to write my own because this is really all I feel like I need from those packages. And installing at least BioStrings is a pretty heavy lift for someone that's not familiar with Bioconductor. At this point, I'm not really sold on wanting to do things in Bioconductor. So I'm gonna do this here, right? Um, also, if I got the read.fasta from that other package, uh, then I would have that other package as a dependency. And again, dependencies aren't the end of the world if it's going to help advance your cause. And I think we can do this read underscore fasta probably un in under about like 20 lines of code. So let's go ahead and do that. The other thing I'm gonna do because I'm doing things in test-driven development is use uh, test and then we'll also call that read underscore fast day. And this will create a test file. So test hyphen read underscore fast day. And if you haven't been watching along, you'll know that in the tests directory inside of test that we now have our test files. And we have one in there from our Kamer based operations. 
and I might break that up further down the road. But for now, let's roll with read uh, fast A, and we've got our R script, and we've got our test file, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and save the vignette, and so we can go ahead and test, and so this should pass pretty simply. And so that takes a little bit of time because I still have some C++ code in here that isn't really doing anything, um, but I don't wanna get rid of it quite yet. So anyway, we now have a second context, read underscore fast day. Um, and so this test is passing that we do expect equal, um, two times two should equal four. Sure enough, that's what we get. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because that's not what we wanna do. So I'm gonna say test underscore that. And then the name I'm gonna give this test is uh, read in fast day formatted data generates a data frame, okay? And so my vision here is to read in fast day formatted data. And so if you're not familiar with fast day formatted data, we can look at some of this. So let's go ahead to our terminal and I could do something like head benchmark train set train set dot rdp dot fast day. This is a uh, the training set, the, the reference data that we were reading in in our vignette. That's this file here, right? So if I look at the head of that, you'll get a sense of what fast day formatted data looks like. You'll have one line that starts with a greater than sign. And then after that is the sequence name. And then you might see some number of comments or additional information. I'm not really concerned with this additional information, but you know, not all fast day formatted files look the same. They don't all have the same extra information. Um, sometimes they have nothing. Sometimes they just have other information than the taxonomy. Next, on the second line or the following lines before the next line of the, the, the sequence name is the actual DNA sequences. So this data um, has all about 1500 characters on one line. I've also seen this done where maybe there's only 80 characters per line. And so then this, this what I've got highlighted here is broken up over, I don't know, 20 or so different lines. So I would like my read fast day file to take into account these different situations. So let's go back to our test and I will go ahead and create a fast day file. Now, this is the problem with working with files and tests is that I don't have any files currently that are going to be transported along with the rest of the package. When you submit things to CRAN, you wanna keep the package relatively small. And so I'm worried about putting too much into the package that might contribute to that, that size of the data in the package. So what we can do instead is use base R to write a fast A file to a temporary file, read in from that temporary file, and then prove to ourselves that everything looks good. So what I'll do is temp equals temp file. Um, and so what this will do is this will create a temp file. So if I type temp, up temp, then I get the path to my temporary file. So I'll go ahead and copy this, copy that, and then let's do head on that. And it says nothing is there because I haven't written anything to it yet, right? So if instead I said uh, write uh, temp, so we'll say file equals temp, and then X is the data that we're gonna write to that. So I'll say, hello world, right? Okay, so if we run that, and now we go to our terminal and look at that, we see that that's written to our file, right? And so then I can read from that. I can do scan, and I can then do scan on temp, and I'll say what equals character, because it's a character file. And so then that reads in two values, hello world, because scan uses white space as a delimiter. If instead I had done say like sep equals backslash n for a line break being the separator, I get hello world to be one line. Also, you'll see that it's saying read one item. That's gonna be distracting. So what we can then also say is quiet equals true. And so then that goes away, okay? So this is the makings of our, our process, right? Of working with a FASTA file. So let's start by replacing hello world and put in here, um, I'll say seek uh, A, and then I'll do backslash N, and I'll do ATGC, ATGC, and then I'll put in another. And so maybe here I'll do seek B, TACG, TACG, okay? And so now when we write that, let's go back to our terminal and see that we now have our file with two sequences in it, right? So again, we have our header, and we have our sequence, 
Very good. You'll notice that this overwrites the file. So what you'll see is that if we add another uh, sequence, we can do seek C backslash N, T, C, C, G, A, T, G, C, and then I do file equals temp, append equals true, that that will then write to the end of the file, adding my sequence C, okay? So this is how we can use a temporary file to write data to a file and then this, this file, this temporary file will vanish when I leave R in R Studio. okay? And so what I'd like to do then is take this value of temp and I'm gonna send that to read fast day. So I'll do read underscore fast day, temp. I'll then go ahead and call the sequence DF because I'm gonna output the data as a data frame. And what I would like to have then is a data frame that's got two columns, ID, equaling uh, a vector of values. So it's a column of values, right? And so we'll have seek A, seek B, and seek C. And then I'll have sequence. And again, that will be a vector with three different values in it of our three different sequences. So I'll go ahead and grab those and plop them in here. And it's putting that extra N on that. So I'll grab this second sequence and plop that in the second value and then this we'll plop here all right and then we'll call this expected and let's get our tabs to line up great and then we'll do expect equal uh, sequence df expected okay save and test and that should definitely fail sure enough it fails because it couldn't find the function read fast day so we'll go back to read fast day and then we'll say read fast a is a function and it's going to take in a file argument. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save and test. And now we should get a different error message, right? That actual is null and the expected is an S3 object of class data frame. Cool. All right. So I'm going to come back to my vignette here and we'll go ahead and grab these lines of code. So I'm going to copy it for now. I'll go ahead and comment those out. And I'll paste that in. And so we're going to scan the file argument, right? And then I talked about using the separator uh, being the line break and quiet equals true. For now, I'm going to say file equals temp as I'm kind of developing uh, this out. And so now my fast day data has these different values. And you can see that each slot corresponds to a different line in my file. So the two values I need for my test are ID and sequence. We'll come back here then to read fast day and I'll call this ID and the sequence, right? So this code for line seven here gets a little bit messy. Um, and so let's look at this first part, right? And so first of all, inside of the square braces, we're running the seek function. The seek creates a sequence of numbers from one to the length of fast day, which should be six. Yep. And so then going from one to six by twos, we should get one, three, five. We do. And then fast day data uh, running that, we see then that we get those three values that we have up here from our fast day data vector. Okay. So now what we need to do is go ahead and remove those pesky greater than signs. So that is actually happening down here on line eight, but this is using str replace all from the string r package. String r, we had access to in our vignette because we were running library tidyverse. What we're already using in our package is string i. And so I'm going to use string I instead of string R. The syntax should look fairly similar, but you know what? To make it simpler, I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything <laughs> um, because this regular expression pattern is a little bit funky. So let's go ahead and do string I and we'll do str I replace all. And then we'll have a greater than sign uh, as in quotes. And then we'll replace that with nothing. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a caret before that greater than sign because that means I want that greater than sign to occur at the very beginning of the line, okay? That's what the caret means. If you wanna match something at the end of the line, it's a dollar sign. So now if we go ahead and run this, we should get our sequence names without those greater than signs. And it's upset with me because I should use str replace all underscore, I believe char class. Oh, nope, I think it's regex. All right, regex. And so then we'll do ID. And now we see that we get that greater than sign removed. I should have known that 
because I had this caret in here, which is a sign of a special regular expression. Okay, so now we have our IDs, and then we're going to use similar but slightly different logic to get the sequence data, right? And so again, we're using the seek function, but we're going to start at position two, going to six by twos. And so then we should get two, four, and six. Cool. And then you plug that into FASTA data. You get those three sequences, right? And so then we can do data.frame ID equals ID, uh, sequence equals sequence. Go ahead and save and test. Hopefully it passes. It passes. Wonderful. So some of you are saying, Pat, you pulled a fast one on us. The test you used was really simple compared to what you actually have in your data, right? So again, if you look back at our terminal, um, you'll notice that our sequence name has a space after it or tab after it, followed by some other information, right? Like there's actually the, the organism name that the sequence came from, as well as its taxonomy. We might like to have this extra information stored in its own um, column. We might want to have like a comments column, right? So let's go ahead and think about that. So if we come back to test uh, read fast day, I'm going to go ahead and create a sequence D. And then in here, I will then put uh, B uh, serious uh, UW85. And then that's a space. I'm going to do another one. I'll do E. coli. Um, and we'll put a tab in, right? So we'll then do E. coli uh, K12. And then we'll put in another tab. And maybe then we'll say something like uh, bacteria, uh, proteobacteria. And that's probably good enough. Okay. So let's go ahead and run these lines. And then we'll, we can double check by uh, looking at our file. And so now we see this is our temporary FASTA file, right? That's great. And so now if we save this and test it, it's going to fail, I'm pretty sure, right? Yeah, so it fails. <laughs> so of course, I didn't update what the expected sequence was, right? And so I'll go ahead in here and do seek uh, D and seek E. And so then the sequence for these are here. And so I'll go ahead and add that as well. And then I think I used the same sequence for both. So I'll go ahead and save that and test it. This failed um, and it's failing because what I had was seek D and what it had was the whole thing, right? All it did was remove the greater than sign. So what we'd like to do is come back here and think about how we might modify our regular expression to only capture the name, right? So what we'll do here is I'm going to use parentheses to capture the information uh, that is contained within that part of the regular expression, right? And so what I will do in here then is uh, back back w for a word uh, type character. Um, and I think that should match a digit as well. And then to the right of the hat, um, actually, we need to put in a star, right? So that will match zero or more word characters. So that should be like A through Z, uppercase, lowercase, as well as numbers, and I think punctuation. We'll, we'll find out, right? We'll then go ahead and match a space character, a white space type character, as well as anything else that follows that. And then we're going to replace that with back back one to match the stuff that's in these parentheses. So let's go ahead and run this and see what we get. Running that, I realized I forgot to, to update my file um, to be the value of temp, which is the again the path to our file. So let's go ahead then and update FASTA data. And then we'll go ahead and run this. And so now what we see is weirdness, right? And so it didn't have anything to the right of the pattern because basically there's no space for sequence A, B, or C. But then it used one, um, which I think is probably this thing that it's matching. And what this reminds me is that string R uses back back one or the number for the um, kind of the, the, the callback to that captured information, whereas string I uses a dollar sign. So now when we run this and look at ID, so now what we see is that D and E are formatted correctly, but A, B, and C have that greater than sign that hasn't been removed and that hasn't been removed because seek a seek b seek c with the greater than sign doesn't match this pattern right so i think what i can put in here then is another star after the back back s to match zero or more um, white space characters so let's go ahead and try that 
regular expressions are always a little bit fraught and a little bit scary. That worked great. Um, I'm going to try to put a piece of punctuation or a number into one of these. Maybe I'll put, instead of seek E, I'll put uh, seek four. And maybe um, I'll go ahead and copy this down and do seek underscore four. And I'll call this, oh, let's call this Salmonella. Um, I don't know, is it like LT2 or something crazy like that? Anyway, uh, and so then we'll add to this. Uh, so instead of seek E, you have seek four, and then we should have seek underscore four as another sequence name. Great, and then we have another sequence. It's the same sequence. That doesn't really matter. So we'll go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and test it and see if it passes this time. And that passed, wonderful. I guess we could kind of prove it to ourselves uh, by doing file temp, and then we could uh, rerun these lines and uh, output that. And we then see that we get not quite the right answer. Why don't we have the right answer? Oh, because probably I need to load all this stuff. Um, oh, I went one too many lines. So again, I test. I trust the tests far more uh, than my own testing skills. Again, this is one of the nice things about having the automated testing. So you don't have to worry about all this stuff, right? Um, and so now if I look at ID, I see that, yeah, I still have that underscore sequence four and um, that's good. And of course I could load the package, which is what it was upset with me for here. And I could run read fast day on temp and then see that I get this data frame with my IDs and my sequences. So that's good. That looks a lot like what I would hope it would look like. Um, the next thing that I wanna do is capture this information to the right of the sequence name in a comment um, field within my data frame, okay? And so let's go ahead and add that. So I will then do comment equals, um, and then the first three aren't going to have, or the first, yeah, the first three aren't gonna have anything, right? And then D, the fourth one is going to have this be serious UW85. And then um, this one is gonna have all this stuff up to the new line break, plop that in there. And then we'll also have the same thing for this salmonella with a semicolon. Okay. Cool. So we're going to save and test. It's going to fail, right? Um, and it's going to fail because um, it says the actual length is two, the expected length is three. And so length on a data frame is the number of columns, right? So we'll come back here. And what I'd like to then do is go ahead and modify my line seven and eight here, right? And so I'll do, I'll call this ID underscore line, right? And then my ID uh, will be ID underscore line on that. And then I, again, have my like uh, fast day data is all that stuff. And then my ID line is gonna be ID line, has all that good stuff, right? And so um, my ID then, uh, ID should be the sequence name. So that's right. So now what we want to get is the comment. So we'll do comment you know, on D lo ID line. And we're going to use something very similar to this, but instead of capturing the sequence name, we're going to capture everything but the sequence name. Okay, so I'm going to remove those parentheses here, and then I'm going to put the parentheses around the dot star. Go ahead and save that. Um, but before I do, though, we want to go ahead and add comment equals comment. Uh, go ahead and now save and test. Hopefully it should pass. Wonderful. We're on a roll here. That's great. One thing that is missing from this, however, is that we don't have a case where we have multiple line for sequences, right? And so I think what I'll do is maybe grab this seek D and copy it down. Um, let's say as seek E, um, be serious UW123, and I'm going to make it multiple lines. So I'm going to have uh, this sequence uh, going on multiple lines. And so if we look at what this looks like, let's get the temp directory, because I think I might be screwing that up somehow. And then we'll do cat on that. There we go. So we see now everything we had previously but then our be, be serious, and I really butchered the spelling of that, sorry, um, is on two lines. And so this should be up with that, right? 
And so what we could imagine doing is go ahead and that was uh, sequence E. And so towards the end here, we'll go ahead and put seek E. And then the sequence is going to be these two sequences uh, pasted together. And then we'll move that backslash N. All right. And then it did have a comment, which was uh, oh, it was B series UW123, right? And we'll go ahead and add that. All right. So now if we save and test, it should fail. Fails, right? Um, and so it failed. Why? So the error says that data frame in arguments are implying different numbers of rows, eight and seven, right? So our, our sequence DF has eight rows and expected has seven. So I'll go ahead and load the package and we can kind of run through this and see what it's doing and outputting for sequence DF. We're getting an error there. Um, and so it's saying it's not found because it didn't generate it. Um, and again, yeah, that's, that's causing problems. So it's saying arguments imply a different number of rows, eight, seven. So we've got three arguments here and I think they have different numbers of rows, which if I had to guess, sequence would have eight rows and ID and comment would have seven. So let's go ahead and take temp back to read fast day. And we'll then say file equals temp. And then we'll look at fast day data, right? And so we see again, our sequence E has two lines of sequences, our ID line, our D and comment, our ID and comment. Um, what we see is that um, because we were assuming basically all the odd lines in the file were the sequence headers, the sequence names, and the even were the sequences that we have um, an odd line here, 15, right? That is then becoming another header. And so that's what's causing problems. So it's actually ID and comment that have eight rows and sequence has seven. All right. So this is where we need to do some more refactoring. So I'm going to modify my code pretty substantially. And instead of using the index, again, assuming that the headers are on the odd rows and the sequences of the evens, I'm going to step through my file line by line, looking to see if that line starts with a greater than sign. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do four line in uh, seek along uh, fast day data. So what seek along will do is that this will give me the numerical index for each, um, value of a vector. Okay. And it's a pretty safe way to do it. I think I've briefly talked about it a few episodes back. I'm not nearly as um, diligent in using this as I should be. But anyway, okay. So what we'll say then is fast day data line, we're going to use a string I um, with STRI detect Right? And so we're going to detect on this string and the pattern we're going to look for is at the beginning uh, is a greater than sign. I think it probably wants street detect underscore regex. Okay. So if we run that, um, I should say like line equals one for now. And let's then look at this. That's true. Right. But if, uh, if line were two, it should say false. It says false. Good. Right. So basically if this is true, right? So if this whole thing is true, then it's a header that I'm going to write to a vector that I'll create that I will call ID, right? So I'll say ID is of type character. All right. And then I'll also have a sequence that's of type character. And then we'll have comment that's also of type character. Okay. So let's get those all loaded. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and define these to be the length of my fast day data. That's way too long, but it's going to be faster than doing it um, using the C operator to grow a, a vector, right? And so we'll say n lines, and then we'll do length on fast day data, right? And then we'll put n lines in to the argument for these. So if we then run these, we'll then see ID has 15 values and they're all empties, right? And so what we can then do would be something like um, ID square brace line equals uh, fast a data line, right? 
And so then if we ran this and then looked at ID, and so what I'm seeing is that these are being inserted every other value um, except at the bottom, right? And so that's not exactly what I want to do. I don't exactly want to index into ID the line number. I think what I'll do instead is create a separate index and I'll seed it with a value of one. And then I will put that in here. So I'm indexing ID with index. And then what I can do then is say index, index plus one. So every time I update the name, the index will also get updated, okay? And so if we go ahead and let's rerun this and then look at ID, we then see that, yeah, we now see that we have our sequence names and our comments, right? And so what we can begin to do is, uh, let's worry about the sequences here in a minute, uh, but for now we can worry about the ID and the comment, right? And so then what we can do is go ahead and grab this. So this is going to be our ID line. So we'll say ID line equals this stuff, right? And then our ID index, let's grab um, down here. I'll get the comment and the ID. Uh, put that here, okay? And so ID line, and so ID is gonna be indexed into with index. Same thing here for comment. And then we'll increment that index there. And so now we'll go ahead, um, yeah, let's go ahead and try this and see what we get. So then if we say ID, we then get our properly formatted names, comment, we get our properly formatted comments. And noticing that the first three don't have anything, which is what we would have expected. All right, that works. Now what we wanna do is turn our attention to the sequence data, right? And so but then what we can say is if this search is false, right? So if we don't find the greater than sign, we'll say else, and I'm going to create a um, vector of sequences. And I don't know how many I'm gonna have, so I'll create a temp uh, sequence object that is initially empty, right? And then let's give us some more real estate here. So we'll say temp sequence, and we'll then, um, we'll go ahead and concatenate things together. So we'll say temp uh, sequence, and then we'll add into that fast a data square bracket, and then that will be line, right? Now, if we're not at the header, uh, the sequence name line, it's going to create this as a vector. But <laughs> what we would like to do is output it at some point as a, um, as a sequence, but we want to collapse together the vector. And so what we can then do is sequence index, and then we can do paste temp sequence, and we'll do collapse equals uh, double quotes. All right. And then we also need to put temp sequence back to being empty. So we'll say temp sequence as double uh, quotes. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see what we get, all right? And so now we can do sequence and we get sequences. Um, but what am I noticing? We're missing the last sequence, right? Um, and that is because, if I had to guess, um, what value are we on? Index is eight. Um, and so we're ready for this one. Let's see what temp sequence looks like. So temp sequence has been loaded, but it hasn't been pasted together. And that is because it got to else and line is already at the largest value, um, basically at um, 15, right? So if we say line, it should be 15. It's 15, right? And so it's not gonna do another loop. And so we basically have to force it to do this step again, okay? And so now what we can do outside of this loop is sequence index on that. And so now if we run that, and now we look at sequence, we now see that we've got um, our final sequence is twice as long as everything else, which is good. And then we have all these other empty quotes. We have this initial empty set of quotes for kind of the same reason as what we had up here, right? And so basically what happened was that we come in here 
And initially we're on line one, we have a sequence header and we don't have anything stored in temp sequence except double quotes, right? There's probably a way that we could do this a little bit differently, but I think this will work just fine. And that what we could do is we could then, uh, we can basically use our index value, which is eight, which is right here, right? Or if we look at ID, um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Because it incremented the index after it outputted it, right? And so what we could say then would be something like data.frame. Actually, I've already got this down here, right? So why don't we just use that? All right, so we'll do that. And so then ID was gonna go from one to index minus one. And we'll do the same type of thing down here for comment on one to index minus one. And then sequence, if you recall, sequence starts at two and goes to eight. So that's gonna go from two to index, okay? So then we output this and this is what we get. And that looks good. Let's go ahead and save it and load it and test it. And that passes. Wow, everything was passing today. I don't know what, what got into my fingertips, but far fewer typos and far fewer mistakes. Anyway, um, this gets us to a pretty good point. Um, let's go ahead, and I thought I could do this in under 20 lines, and ultimately we got to about 44 lines. There's probably little things we could do in here to clean it up a little bit further and make it probably a little bit more elegant and a little bit, um, I don't know, maybe even faster. I'm not worried about that at this point. We can come back and worry about that later. Um, I'm, I'm banking that this scan function is probably the fastest thing we could do. Um, maybe I'll do some digging and maybe we'll do some more benchmarking to see what is the fastest way to read in a file. But for the most part, this works, right? That's kind of, we're on like step three of things working where we saw that in our test, we tried all sorts of different things and we got them all to pass by adding features to our test and then adding feature to our code to make sure that it all worked. Let's return to our vignette and make sure that it works here. So I'm gonna go ahead and take fast day data and then do read underscore fast day. And we'll do that with my uh, fast day file name. All right, so we'll go ahead and make sure that's loaded. And then um, let's just make sure all this good stuff is here. Get that read in. Oh, sequence names not found. And that's refer referring back up to here where we had sequence names and sequences. Instead of this tibble, uh, maybe we'll do as dot tibble um, on our fast day data. And maybe I'll call this fast day df, right? To make it more clear what it is. And we're then going to join by, well, I have ID in accession. So we're gonna modify the code here to, to um, use different column names. So the first column is going to be ID. Um, and then we'll say equals accession because genera um, has accession as the first column right there, right? I could modify this to be ID and that I wouldn't need this, but eh, whatever. So now if we run that works, but it wants me to use as underscore tibble instead. So let's go ahead and do that. Make it happy. Fasta DF not found. Let's go ahead and let's see. All right, there we go. And so now if we build our Kmer database, that works. I'm gonna go ahead and classify this back to alleys, and then we'll do 100 bootstraps with a Kmer size of eight. Let's go ahead and classify that. Oh, and I need to put in back to alleys in here for my unknown sequence. This is the output for that. And then if we filter it to 80% confidence, so my consensus is the output of this. All right, um, so I haven't gotten a lot of reps in using this tool yet. Um, and along the way, as we use it more and more, we might find that we don't really like how we have things named, but or how we have things organized. And so there we go with our classification, right? So it works on the micro tests, the unit tests. It also works in the integration tests, integrating it into the overall vignette. And so that's fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and remove this commented out code. And I think um, we're in pretty good shape. And so we've got a pretty nice read fast day. Like I said, we might come back and do some additional um, benchmarking to see what is the fastest way to read these things in. But I'm pretty happy with how long that took. Uh, I don't think we're gonna do too much better than that. But what we'll do in the next episode, I think, is come back and build another function for reading the, the for loading the genera. So what I realized we didn't do over here in our code 
was go ahead and insert the Roxygen skeleton. This will export the code. I think it worked this time with read fast A because I already had it loaded um, as an object. So we'll have to update this documentation as well at some point, but um, it's really exciting to have these different types of testing pass. Again, what I wanted to emphasize in a way here is that we can write tests for our reading functions by writing data the way we want it um, depicted to a temp file. And we did that here on line three of my test. And then we can then read it, like I've shown here on line 11, treating this temp data like, um, like it's any other file, right? And so we saw again that we had temp. And so that that's this. And again, if we look at this in our terminal, uh, we've already done this, we see this, right? And so if I quit out of R, um, so why don't I go ahead and quit out of R and then come back and go to my terminal and then rerun this, it's gonna say it's not there, right? And it says it's not there because uh, the temporary files go away <laughs> at the end of your R session or using R Studio. And so again, it really is temporary. And I find using these temporary files are really helpful for doing this type of testing in our package development. All right, so I think the next episode, we will talk more about um, reading in our taxonomy data and making a function for that. And, you know, maybe we'll pick up with a thing or two uh, along the way. So that you don't miss that episode, please make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.